So every once in a while, I get the opportunity to, to sit down and talk with some people about money and finances. And it's surprising how many people hate credit cards. It's almost like this burning passion, this anger and rage against credit cards. Not only do they think that you shouldn't use them, but it's almost like they are evil incarnate. I mean, we hear people like billionaire Mark Cuban say that if you use a credit card, you don't want to be rich. That's a pretty powerful statement considering who it's coming from, a billionaire, somebody that knows a thing or two about finance. And I mean, when I'm talking to these people, I've heard all kinds of different reasons as far as why you shouldn't get a credit card. I mean, people have even quoted the Bible to me. So there's a passage in the book of Proverbs that essentially says the borrower is the slave to the lender. That's a pretty powerful statement. And I know when I turned 18, I was scared to death of credit cards. I didn't really know anything about credit cards other than my parents said that they were extremely dangerous. So what exactly is the deal with credit cards? Are they some evil tool that is going to cause you to go broke? Or are they just misunderstood pieces of plastic begging to be used? Hi, my name is Ben, and this channel is dedicated to all things related to personal finance, helping you earn more, spend less, and invest the difference. So if you're interested in taking over your personal finances, consider subscribing, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I have new content every week. So when it comes to credit cards, are they good or bad? Well, realistically, they're somewhere in between. A credit card is a tool, kind of like a hammer is a tool. Now a hammer is very useful if you have a nail and you're trying to hang a picture. But if you have a screw, then the hammer doesn't do you a lot of good. Even though a nail and a screw are very similar in nature, now you have the wrong tool to get the job done. The point of all of this is that you need to use the right tool for the job. One tool can be fantastic in a given set of circumstances, and it can be equally terrible in another set of circumstances. So when it comes to credit cards, a lot of times we hear about people that maybe they get credit cards when they turn 18 and they don't really understand how the whole process works and they max out their credit cards. And then they are in financial debt for a very, very long time. One of my best friends, she got some credit cards and she maxed them out when she was 18. And now 12 years later, her financial life is still in trouble, largely due to the extremely high interest rates that these credit cards charge. A lot of credit cards can charge 15, 20, 25% interest rate. And for anyone that knows anything about compound interest, that high of an interest rate is crippling. It will destroy your financial future if you are making the minimum payments and continually getting charged this high interest rate. In fact, if you were to borrow $2,000 at an 18% interest rate on your credit card, which is actually relatively decent interest rate for credit cards, if you only made the minimum payment, it's entirely possible that it would take you over 30 years to pay off this credit card debt. Not only that, but you would pay two and a half times the amount of money in interest alone. So that $2,000 initial charge ends up costing you $7,000 over a 30 year period. So you can imagine what happens if now instead of only a $2,000 charge, we're talking about $10,000 or $20,000, what that would do to your financial future. But I think one of the big things when it comes to credit cards is that for the most part, if you use a credit card responsibly, it is 100% free to use that credit card. Now it's true that some upper level premium credit cards charge an annual fee, but besides that, if you pay your credit card balance in full on time every month, you will never be charged a single penny in interest. And that's really important because if you're not being charged any interest, if it is not costing you any money because you are being responsible and paying your debt on time, every time in full like you should, then you can actually get significant amounts of benefits 
from using your credit card. Now it's not a tool to put you into a perpetual debt cycle. Now it's a tool that you can actually use to make money. And the fact that credit cards can actually make you money is something that the middle and upper class is very aware of and that they use to their advantage. So if you look at this chart that shows how different income bracket people prefer to spend their money, those making under $25,000 a year, the overwhelming majority of them are paying cash for all of their purchases. Only about 5% of these people are using credit cards primarily as their means to purchase products. But as we move to the right on this chart, a massive 66% of sort of the higher end earners prefer to use credit cards. Why do you think that is? What do these folks know about credit cards that the, the lower income people aren't taking advantage of? You see, the problem for these lower income earners is that they tend to struggle financially to begin with. And so when they put something on a credit card, they make a purchase, they may not have money at the end of the month to actually pay that off like they're supposed to, and then they get charged interest rates, and those interest rates are killer. And so not only were they struggling to begin with, but now they're paying potentially late fees and interest charges and all kinds of different stuff, and it really hurts them financially. But if you're able to use a credit card responsibly, you can actually make a fair amount of money on these credit cards. In fact, some people have even gone so far as to say that credit cards are an invention of the rich people because it transfers wealth from poor people to rich people. And here's kind of how that happens. So when you go to a store, let's say Walmart, and you buy $100 worth of products and you swipe your credit card, maybe it's a Visa or MasterCard or whatever it is, when you swipe your card, that company, Visa or MasterCard, they are going to charge Walmart probably anywhere from three to 5% of whatever it is that you bought for the privilege of using their credit system. So on a $100 purchase, Walmart now owes Visa somewhere between three and $5. So Visa just made three to $5 just by you swiping your credit card. Now, when you think of the hundreds of millions of people around the world swiping credit cards on a regular basis, this three to 5% really starts to add up to a serious amount of money. So in order to incentivize people to use their credit card as opposed to some other company's credit card, the competition, they give you financial perks to incentivize you to use their cards. And these perks can come in a variety of different ways. So the first way is by offering a sign-up bonus. This is when you apply for a credit card for the first time. And a lot of times you can actually earn quite a bit of money up front just by beginning to use this card. Now terms and conditions are obviously gonna vary depending on which card you get. But something along the lines of being able to get a $200 cash rewards for spending $1,000 on this new credit card within the first three months of applying for the card is relatively common. Now, most people are gonna spend $1,000 in a three month time frame to begin with. I mean, I don't know anybody that spends less than $330 a month, so 1,000 over a three month period on food and gas and clothing and you know, you add up all that stuff and you're going to spend $1,000 within three months. So if you're already going to be spending that money, why not get $200 cash back simply by using this credit card? And there are hundreds of different credit cards. So you can theoretically constantly apply for new credit cards, get the initial sign up bonus, and then never use that card again, move on to the next credit card. Now, obviously, if you're gonna be doing this method, you don't wanna be buying stuff simply to spend enough money to qualify for the cash back. You just wanna be spending money that you would normally spend regardless of how you paid for it. If you're interested in learning more about this, 
consider watching this video up here. I go into a little bit more detail on some of the cards available. And the next way that you can get money from your credit cards is by some sort of a points or cash back reward system. You know, maybe you earn hotel points or airline miles or just straight up cash back or something like that. And so what they're doing is they're taking that three to 5% that they're charging Walmart or wherever you bought this product from. They're taking three to 5% and then they might offer you something like 2% cash back. So now instead of making three to 5%, they're making somewhere between one to 3% profit after they pay you the 2% cash back. And 2% adds up over time. I mean, think of it this way, consider it a 2% coupon on literally everything that you will ever buy in your life. Now, I have a bunch of different credit cards. I use them for a variety of different things. So I can typically get a lot better than 2% cash back. So I recently just bought a new computer and it ended up costing me roughly $1,000, but I was able to get 5% cash back on this computer. That's $50 cash back simply by using a credit card. So it cost me 5% less to buy it by swiping the card and then paying that balance in full at the end of the month, as opposed to if I had simply paid cash. And this is why a lot of people think that credit cards are designed specifically for the rich. And the reason for that is because when Walmart gets charged that three to 5% of everything that they swipe, Walmart doesn't want to lose money. So what they do is they simply raise the price a little bit for everything. So they know that some people are gonna pay cash, some people are gonna pay credit card, like they know the statistics on it. And so they simply raise the price of every product in the store a little bit to offset this cost that the credit card companies are going to charge them. And so by raising the cost for everybody, it makes people that pay cash need to pay even more cash. So them paying a higher rate is actually subsidizing me when I get my cash back for using a credit card. So every year I get several thousand dollars worth of stuff from my credit cards partially because I continually sign up for new credit cards to get that sign-on bonus, partially due to cash back, and partially due to the fact that I'm in the military and so I have a few extra perks available to me as a military member that the majority of people simply don't have access to. If you're active duty military and you're looking to take advantage of some of these ridiculous offers that credit card companies have, Consider watching this video, I go into great detail about how you can get thousands of dollars of stuff for free every year simply by having the right credit cards. So as you can see, credit cards aren't inherently good or bad. It's all in the matter of how you end up using them. If you are responsible and pay your bills in full every time like you're supposed to, a credit card will not cost you any money. And it will, however, give you significant financial benefits from the sign-on bonus or continually getting some sort of cash back or airline miles or something of tangible value for money that you are going to have spent anyway. But on the flip side, if you are irresponsible, if you are gonna rack up a large amount of credit card debt and you're not able to pay it off in full, if you're paying that monthly interest rate or you're not paying it on time and you're paying those late fees, then having a credit card is probably the single biggest mistake that you will ever make financially. It will destroy your financial future. That's why it's so important to understand how much money that you're actually putting on your credit card every month so that you actually have enough money to pay it in full. Always, I recommend setting up automatic bill pay with your bank for the full amount, uh, the full balance every month. That way you never have to worry about, oh, the bill is coming due tomorrow, I gotta log in and pay this bill. It'll simply automatically pay your bill in full, that way you don't have to worry about anything. So that's gonna wrap it up for us today, folks, why I love credit cards. If you found this video useful, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear from you guys, and as always, I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.